Alright guys, so before we start today's video, I just wanted to say I did manage to get in contact with a representative from Gotway before uh, actually releasing this video. And Gotway is aware of the problem and they do believe they have a solution. So look for that coming soon. Get in contact with your dealer if you are experiencing these issues. Hopefully they can help you take care of it and they can help you get the uh, situation remedied as soon as Gotway gets their solution out there. All right, what's going on guys? It's your man George and today we are going to be talking about an issue that is creeping up with a lot of these masters, whether it's first, second, or third batch. We've seen some issues with the batteries and today my man Jason is going to help us go through some of the issues that are uh, creeping up and how to solve them. They're definitely not issues that everyone's going to be able to deal with themselves. So that's part of the reason I want to make this video is because you really need to know what you're getting into when you buy one of these masters especially these early batches where they still really haven't figured it out yet, honestly. So uh, let's get into it. All right, so Jason, what's the long and the short of it here? We're seeing masters not balancing properly. Yeah, so when I got my master, I was a little underwhelmed by the range that I got, uh, roughly about 40 miles running to beeps. And when I was charging it, it's supposed to be 134.4 volts, but no matter what I did, I couldn't get more than 133.6. No matter if I left it trickle charging for hours, that's all I could get. So I, I went through a couple things and I found there's probably two causes of the issues. Uh, we'll talk through both of them, but ever since addressing these, I'm getting about an extra eight or nine miles range and able to get 134.4 volts consistently on a charge. That's huge. All right, so the two issues he's talking about are A, the chargers, right? When these masters first came out, we saw a lot of people talking about how the chargers were miscalibrated. They're just not reaching the 134.4 volts. So let's start with that issue. If you have a charger that's not reaching 134.4 volts, this is how you're going to be able to fix it. All right, so first, how do you actually figure out if your charger is pushing 134 volts? Well, first thing you're going to need is a nice little voltmeter like the one my man Jason has right here. Uh, Jason, why don't you show the people how sure. to uh, check the voltage coming out of a charger. So one of the things that you're going to do here, and you have to be careful because you're dealing with high voltage, put your charger plugged in, use your multimeter and set it to DC volts, and you're going to check the pins. It's the one and four pin. It doesn't matter if you use positive and negative on each, but just don't touch them together. <laughs> Unless you like sparks. So what I found is when I looked at my charger, and this one is a perfect example, this is brand new, just delivered, 134 volts. Now, no two multimeters are gonna be perfectly calibrated, so you might check on another multimeter and it might say 134.1 or 133.9, but it's close enough for government work. Um, check it, if it's not 134.4, it's really easy to adjust. What we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the four Phillips screws on the top right here which I've already done, save time, and open this up. Now, this is plugged in. Don't stick your fingers in there. Again, air to the side of caution. So you've got two pot switches here. The one on the right that's behind this fan is the one that is the micro adjustment for voltage. So what we do here is, uh, I guess you can see that. So it's measuring 134. So if we go in here and again, being very careful not to touch any metal. We're gonna go and adjust it, 134.2, three. I can't even see it now with the camera. 134.4. <laughs> so now we're good. It's outputting full voltage. All right guys, so if you've been riding your unicycle for a while now, you know just how important it is to fully top off and balance charge your batteries. Just for safety right if your voltages are creeping downward over time you're gonna have issues with a potentially dead cell eventually so what you're gonna want to do is make sure that you're balanced charging on a routine basis so if your charger isn't capable of reaching those full balance charges you're gonna have to adjust it um, unfortunately it seems like a lot of these master chargers are being shipped slightly under calibrated they're just not reaching that number so like Jason just showed us how to fix it if you're not comfortable doing that, I'm sure you can find someone in your local area who will help you out doing that. I know it's intimidating, right? Anytime you have to open up electronics, a lot of people will get a little uncomfortable with doing that. If you're part of the unicycle uh, community here, you're just gonna have to get a little bit more comfortable with that type of work right now while we're still at such a 
uh, infant state of the unicycle, right? We are seeing these things evolve literally on a week to week basis right now. I mean, hell, how many wheels has Bagod released in the past year alone? So for now, while these wheels are still evolving, they're still growing, you're gonna have to get comfortable with doing a little bit of work on your own. And something like a charger calibration, pretty simple and it'd be a really great skill for you to learn. The same really applies to any uh, charger. So uh, it's not just the master. You can check this on any other uh, chargers as well. A lot of times, they, they more, most commonly, they're going to be undervolted. Uh, sometimes they'll be a little higher. That's not bad if they're uh, a, you know, a few tenths uh, above where they're supposed to be charging because the BMSs are going to shut off the excess voltage. But under, you're not going to be able to get to the balancing state. All right, so I got Jason opening the master now so we can look at the next problem. Look at this. They put a sponge as their uh, little waterproofing seal. There's nothing underneath this, really? There's Look nothing. at that. Oh, I lost, oh the I just lost the screws. Oh, God. George is screwing things up. They put a sponge? It, that's the opposite of waterproof. You that's have water. to be very, very careful when you're pulling it out because it tears into little tiny pieces. <laughs> All right, guys. So the next issue with the master is a lot more serious and a lot more complicated to fix. So we're going to get into it now. Basically, what's happening is because the master battery is broken into... All right, so let's just start from the basics, right? How basic batteries are constructed. They're constructed in series and parallels. So in order to get your voltage, you have your series of cells. Basically think of cells stacked on top of each other, right? And then in order to get your capacity, you have your parallels. How many of those stacks next to each other you're gonna get so you can get better range. So the way they decided to configure the master battery, at least in the new batches, is with two sets of 67 volt batteries wired in series. All right, so what we're gonna do, and I'm just wearing rubber gloves, it's always a good idea for you to do that, is we're gonna get in here and we're gonna unplug. Now this is all live, even the charge port is hot. So again- so Please be careful guys. Please be this. careful. Let's take that off, thank you. Basically, he's just unplugging the four separate battery packs yeah. now. And I tried to make them not be touching anything. Because those, the again, faces. they're live, so. It might not even be a bad idea if you're it. at home doing this. Each one you pull off, maybe just put a little piece of tape over oh, it. Just, just to keep it from uh, accidentally arcing. Yep. So now we've got it in. What's this for? I actually wanted to tape them back. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Just happened to yeah, be there. That's fine. It All doesn't right. matter. Yeah, okay. All right. So now there's still charge on this main board. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that. Yeah. Anytime you unplug uh, batteries, guys, free. always discharge them. And in this case, I'm checking to make sure that the wheel free spins because I don't want it to hop off. Not that it's going to. I'm unplugged. I'm going to power it on. See the wheel spun Ooh, just wheel a little bit. Spin a little bit. All right, so now there is no more voltage on the main board. And now what we can do is we can check the individual packs. So we'll turn on the multimeter. Stick that guy on right there. You should be able to see that. And we've got, uh, I think it's an MX60 is what this is called. It's got a uh, positive, negative, and then I assume it's a balancing lead or a communications lead. Um, so we're gonna go in here and we're gonna check and see what do we got. 67.1. All right. That's a point one well. 67.2, so that one's good. It's pretty good. Now this has been sitting on the charger to balance. 66.9. Ha <laughs> ha, there you go. So it's that pack right there in the back. Yep. Uh, so that pack is shutting off before. So if it falls off in the future, 67.4 that one's actually overvolted so yours is a lot like mine was that one's overvolted a little bit interesting so uh now what we got to do is we got to get all of these the exact same voltage and so for this you can't really do it at home unless you have the right uh parts so one of those parts is a uh you can use a bench power supply or an adjustable charger now you could theoretically buy a 67.2 volt charger you could yeah okay so you could buy a 67.2 volt <laughs> charger and make 
What are these called? Uh, I think it's an MX60. Is an what MX60 it's called. connector right on there. your 67 volt charger. It's, we're getting a little complicated here, yeah. but so what I've got here is this is my uh, charger. This is what I use for all my wheels. Thank you, Archie, for this one. Archie, always. How's Archie pop up in all these videos recently? Yeah. He's not gonna pop up. Is he? Where is he? No. All right. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this to 67.2. And I'm going to charge at a low rate of 2 amps. And then this is my XT90 output. So I can have all different kinds of uh, attachments for every kind of wheel. This one charger will just charge every wheel out there. I brought it down to test uh, hall sensors. So I brought it down to 5 volts and 0.1 amps. And it works perfectly. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put it on the low cell first. And pinch my glove in there. <clears throat> and we are charging and now we're going to let it sit until this reads solid zero amps and it's no longer charging anymore it's a hundred percent charged i'll pull that off we'll check all the voltages again and hit each one up on the same charger with the exact same voltage and amperage settings so everything balances just perfectly and once it's all balanced perfectly then we can put it all back together now, how often do you think you're going to have to do that? So what I theorize is by looking at the voltage when I'm charging regularly, if I'm getting 134.4, I'm going to just assume everything is balanced. If I start getting down to 134.0, I'm probably going to open up my wheel and I'm going to check them individually again. All right, guys, so the long and the short of it is if you want to fix this error, you're going to need a charger that charges to 67.2 volts. Exactly, and you're gonna have to charge each of your four batteries individually to 67.4, 67.2 volts. A little over volt is not the end of the world. Under voltage is a problem though. So, at the end of the day, this is not a problem that's going to be very easily fixed. You're gonna have to do some work on your own here. You're gonna have to buy some extra accessories on the side in order to fix this. If this is a problem that you're seeing, check your charger, and if it's not the charger, you're gonna have to check yeah, each individual good. battery. All right, guys, well, I really hope this isn't happening to you and your master, but I know a lot of the local guys here in the Boston and Providence area are experiencing this issue. So I wanted to make sure I made a video about it, a really in-depth explanation of what's happening and how to fix it. So I hope you learned something today. Uh, as always, guys, like, subscribe, all that jazz. If you wanna support the channel, I've got my Alien Rides affiliate link down below. Feel free to purchase something using that uh, if you're gonna buy a unicycle in the future. Um, other than that though, guys, that's it for today's video. I really appreciate you watching, and as always, ride safe.